United! I always hated being the underdog in anything because like you're just looked down upon kind of but then you get to this point where there's no pressure on you and you like proving people wrong to a certain point so like when you start winning and everything and people are still thinking you're not up to par with all these other teams and then you keep beating these teams and proving yourself then like it's only a matter of time before they start respecting us as a team Going in as like, like unsponsored org or unsponsored team, whatever you want to say, uh, it was kind of tough, you know. You don't really get thought of that much when it comes to being like a top level team. People definitely like will sleep on you a little bit when you're just a random team that no one's ever heard of. I mean, for us personally though, like it just like makes us even want it more. Like we just like build off that energy and like people like piss us, piss us off sometimes and like, I don't know, we just like build off of it. Well, talking to Hoxer and Jackson, they want to win and I'm in the same boat with them. But I want to have fun along the way while we do it, so uh, I'm taking the time to explore the city and everything, but when it comes down to it, this is, this is what we do for money, this is what we do to get it. Since this is my first Worlds, like, I got here and I just didn't even know what to do, and it finally hit me like the day of that I'm going to Spain to play at Worlds. What's up, crew? just got uh, to the stadium. I guess previously it was a, uh, a bull, what's it called? A, not bull riding. I know I'm not in Texas or Mexico. Uh, they hold the red flags up. Metador. People, yeah, Metador, whatever it's called. I'm sorry, Spain. But yeah, the stadium is actually really beautiful. Um, great part about Rocket League that I just learned is that all the matches are played on one stage. Uh, so it's no Bravo, no Charlie, no Delta, like all the matches are going to be played on uh, the best stage they have to offer, which is uh, really unique to me. And I think it's going to be a, a good time just being able to watch from one designated spot the entire time. And uh, I know the guys are really excited to play too. This is their first time playing at uh, not even just like a major event, but just like a, a big local you know, tournament. So. Uh, to them, I'm sure they're feeling really excited and really humbled to be out here. Our scrim results weren't very good, but like we knew that the way we were going to play on stage was not going to be the same as the scrims because during the season it wasn't the same either. So we were really confident going into playing the Renegades. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really think they're going to be as good as they were. I think they put up a really good fight. I think after we dropped the first game, we just looked at each other, just talked it out for a couple like minutes, and we sort of just figured it out like we got to just get used to playing on stage, get comfortable. Once we got comfortable, I think we, I think we showed we were the better team. Maybe a second touch here. It's going to come down right in front of the goal line. And United, a 2-0 lead. And a stunning 
crushing effort from Hoxer. That ball bounces off the mark. Sicky, he goes up for it, but Hoxer overpowers him. Goldis, up and over for Sauce. Coming in to take this one out, but with no help, a shot comes through. Nobody home from the Renegades, and a 3 0 lead now for e United. Come on! Facing Vitality about an hour after we beat Renegades. Uh, that schedule is pretty uh, hectic at times, um, but the guys seemed really prepared. Uh, they didn't seem nervous. Uh, I was really impressed with their ability just to kind of watch VODs before we played them. They were talking about strategies and how fast uh, Vitality played at times. Uh, they were talking about certain scenarios that could help them in a match. And, uh, to be honest, uh, Vitality, like that game, playing against the reigning uh, European champions, uh, I thought we played spectacular against them. I definitely think we're on like a we're on a high, like you said, because we just won. I think the first game showed that we were super confident going into it. And after that game, it sort of just felt like everything died. Like we just felt like we were on top of the world after that. We're thinking we're going to win this series. Like we're already beating these guys. We're winning. We're already winning game two, and all of a sudden. We lose that lead in a matter of like 30 seconds and we end up losing that game. And that was like the whole momentum shift. We lost two goal, like bad goals from bad mistakes and it ended up costing us that game. I think in game three it was one nothing, right? And uh, I don't think we could find the back of the net despite all the pressure we had. I think it was a big letdown for us. And then game four, same story, nothing different. We just weren't able to find the back of the net again and they shut us down 1-0 twice in a row. Was there for United up again? Ajax might have a look at this off the back wall. Fairy Peak gets back in time. He sees Scrub down the pitch. Now oh, there's an, an opportunity. Fairy Peak Fairy. Oh, he touches in. He scores and Vitality take the series. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, definitely the experience uh, helps Vitality a lot. The lack of experience for us is definitely the reason uh, why things didn't really go our way. Losing to Vitality reset the bracket for us, so we decided that we were gonna take the next game super serious, and the next game was like our life, it was on the line, so. We were gonna watch replays and take a bunch of scrims, every scrim serious, and like get prepared as much as we can mentally for the next game. Veloce and scrims, they were actually super strong. So most teams don't play how they scrim, and we know that. So coming into the actual match, we were still like super confident we were gonna come out and smack them. Against Veloce, we watched a lot of VODs uh, in the hotel and at the stadium itself. Uh, we knew that they're a really fast-paced team. We scrimmed them before, and we knew that they're really good at passing. They would cut all of our passes off. So I said, uh, we definitely need to have a lot of solo plays and boost our them and demo a lot. We were nervous about their scrim results because they were really good on scrims, but everybody told us that like they don't play the same on stage and that they're way different and not as good on stage. Lose it. They'll be thinking about what else they could have done off the backboard roll. This double tap sets up the Hoxha! Exactly what E United needed. The second touch off the back wall. The follow up from Hoxer. And Roll Diz, the man to do it. What a game from E United as they hang tight over Veloce. After we won game one, we knew that we had to play in game two just the same way. And it was going to work. And that's what we did. And it did work. Challenge not great from Hoxer. Might offer an opportunity. Sets off the backboard. Good touch though. Puts it into space. And now. Veloce have got all the work to do and they will not be able to do it. A reverse sweep required. 
Nice! Nice! One more! One more! Finish it! And then I guess we just started feeling a lot of pressure being up 2-0. We didn't handle it very well. Everything just switched and we made one mistake and that was like the turning point. They had all the momentum. One small mistake definitely leads to something like that because that's what happened in I think game three. Me and Roldis ended up like faking each other right in front of our net and it went in. And I could I could tell that like the morale went down immediately. Hoxer gets that, but for Veloce, this was their chance, and they eventually take it. Starting off on the right foot for Veloce, breaking down the defense of United, making them spread out. You see that double commit. Right before the last game, game five, I was like, we can't go out this way. Like being reverse swept at land would be terrible. And then we went up, and I thought we had it. Next, off the backboard immediately, Flynn tries to trap it. He's off the wall as well, we can keep going here. Flynn, we haven't really seen too much of him throughout this series, but what a chance to really make your impact. Well, that's going to be awkward, that's going to be it! And what a start for E United in the first 19 seconds. Hawkser gets the touch off the back wall. Ajax lurking in a big miss there from Veloce on the first attack. Better the boost enough. He had six boosts as he caught up to the ball there. Just not enough with a follow-up there from Cassio. Can't hit it. Flame, maybe another chance here for Veloce. Frankie's lurking. He puts it away for Veloce. What is this series? Two These teams. teams. And Veloce have got themselves back, and they got themselves back quickly. It means that they can reset entirely mentally. Now Flame looks for the infield pass. Nobody there! now gets a little bounce and it's that small bounce that slows down E United and cuts out their play. Back flip there from Hoxer, leaves the ball floating in midair. Cassio puts a shot on target, saved away by Ajax. And E United got to get control of the, the air right now because they are giving up shot after shot and then none of them are being contested. E United being outpaced by Veloce. Really turning up the heat here from Veloce in the pace of play. And then... I guess, I, I don't know, it's bad. 20 seconds on the clock, Roldis to the corner, Hox has got to try and chase. Didn't get to pick up the boost either, he left it for Roldis. That's it. another midfield interception, Veloce are giving absolutely no ground right now. Ajax has got the control, all three players committed, over the top, gonna to drop down, but it's all that's a flame. He's managed to get it away, bounces awkwardly, but it will not matter. You know, I definitely think like this this result doesn't really speak to how I feel like we uh, we are like we're where we're placed in the Rocket League world in the esports scene. I think we're definitely ahead of nine through twelfth at Worlds. Uh, I mean, hopefully we proved it in some of the series. You know, both the things we played against were good. And both things we lost to were good. You know, uh, I don't really know. I just think I think this result doesn't speak too much to us. I think we're more motivated to come back next season, and uh, definitely excited because the new season's right around the corner. I think we're, we're hoping to get a higher placing during the regionals and league play and stuff, so I expect it to bounce back. Playing in this land, was, it showed us that we're a really good team, that we compete with anybody, and that we just made a couple small mistakes that if they, we didn't make those, we'd be in day three right now. So we're like really confident going into next season. Yeah, the positives from this is that we know that we can kick any team's ass. We definitely are probably a top four team in the entire world. If we're feeling it, we could probably win the whole thing, honestly. It's kind of unfortunate the way the bracket works here, but I mean, next land will whoop everybody's ass, so. I think there's a lot of positives. The positive, the first positive is actually just being here because we grouped, or we teamed five months ago. So like, that's like a super short amount of time to even make it here. We weren't projected to even be top top six in our league in league play, and then to make it to the world championships, it's a it's a big thing. And then another positive is just looking back on all the mistakes. We'll be a lot more experienced for next season, and we'll be ready to take on the next world championship. 
for the offseason to figure out all our kinks and like our mistakes that we made and trying to figure out a different type of role set for each player because uh, I feel like we clash a lot on the field and then when we start clashing is when we start losing focus on the game and how to win the game and everything so I think a lot of it is just what is like I think a lot of what we need to work on is just on our teams ourselves and how we get through our roles and whatnot. Gotcha. Do um, you guys feel confident that you guys can take next season? I'm super confident with the squad I got, as long as we work on ourselves and fix what we need to do.